She-Hulk's first season has concluded, and the finale was definitely, well, something. This is Exasperated Nerd Explains. First of all, I think the finale is emblematic of the series as a whole. Misguided, missing opportunities, and missing the point. The final episode starts off like some sort of fever dream, with Jen having been arrested after the events of the last episode, which, backing up for a second, also happened way too fast and felt forced. I mean, her anger was a reasonable reaction, and she just broke some screens. Didn't destroy a city or anything, but damage control was already on the scene, but I'm digressing. Back to this episode. It basically fast forwards to Jin in jail, making a plea deal involving her wearing an inhibitor to keep her from becoming She-Hulk, losing her job, losing her apartment, moving back in with her parents, like it's all way too fast and feels like when a comic book series is cancelled and they quickly have to wrap up all the dangling plot threads in a single issue like a collapsing star. Then it slows way down and meanders a bit before crashing together again with Jen at Abomination's compound, where he has been hired to be a speaker for the Intelligentsia, where Todd, who has shown up a couple of times in the show, is revealed to be the leader of the Intelligentsia and injects himself with Jen's blood to become a Hulk. Titania barges in and then the Hulk drops in and suddenly everything becomes very meta with She-Hulk breaking into a Disney Plus menu and visiting Marvel Studios. Now first thing, I know She-Hulk has a lot of history breaking the fourth wall and being meta with one run where she goes to the Marvel comic offices and other comics have done this trope before and since. And you know, that's fine as long as it has a solid execution. The problem I have with this whole meta scene is that it isn't funny, clever, or satisfying. They certainly think they are being clever, pointing out the finale has come together as a mess and is following the Marvel formula of a big climactic fight which doesn't match the scope of the property. And that's a valid criticism, but it is their show. They could have just avoided this plot with the blood and another Hulk if they had written it differently. That would have been different. Be a half hour legal comedy, that would be different. Being the same, then pointing out the failures in the show does not excuse those failures. You want to be novel? Set up a novel show. Don't do the same thing and then point out it's the same thing and think you're suddenly exempt from criticism. I swear half this show was oriented around making it criticism proof by making the villains angry internet trolls and then pointing out how the show is an out of control mess instead of focusing on making a good show. And again, it's not even clever. As a Marvel fan, the points they make are not original. We've all heard these discussions about the properties being formulaic and playing it safe before. Then. Their big reveal is that Kevin is a GLaDOS ripoff from Portal, and they pile on the easter eggs with no real merit or context, which is another valid criticism of Marvel. They even make the comment about how it's not Hulk's show, but then still go ahead and have Scar get introduced a few minutes later anyways. The whole point of this meta excursion is that the show has spun out of control, and they were shoehorning in the Hulk and other characters in the finale but then they still do it. But all of this, even if it's not funny or clever, would be forgivable, it would, if you brought it together in a satisfying way. She uses the robot for a literal deus ex machina, making all these changes, removes the Hulk blood, a plot point they set up from the first episode for apparently no reason, removes the Hulk since it's her show, brings in Daredevil for no reason instead, makes it take place in daytime to be quote unquote different, and then the finale? Todd's already being arrested and she tells him she'll see him in court. What even happened? I have no idea. That's not good. When you break the world you've built in such a huge way, you need to reestablish the world and what's going on and only then can you have a satisfying conclusion. Think of it like a time travel plot. If you go back in time and change something, 
you have to show the differences that were made and then have your character react or interact with the changes in order to see what's happened and reinvest in the scene and characters. She-Hulk literally does nothing in this newly altered reality. The bad guy you have built up is literally defeated off screen, not by being outsmarted legally or something clever, but by breaking the story. He's already in handcuffs. Why? She does not need to be there for this. It's good that she didn't break his neck or something, I guess, but still, have your character do something. And if the blood plot does not exist anymore, there's a whole other mess of problems. If that's the case, there was no need for the Wrecking Crew to attack her, and then she would have never met the Wrecker, who was a key character within the storyline of the show. You didn't give your character agency by having her break the fourth wall and confront the algorithm writing Marvel franchises, because in the reality of the show, nothing happened. I cannot think of a more pointless or unsatisfying ending. It's a complete betrayal. Not only because I didn't get my half hour legal comedy show with superheroes, but because what it was building towards, even if I wasn't that excited for it, became an incoherent mess at the end. But since it's on purpose, it's funny and you can't criticize it. Well, I can. It was bad. But what do you think of the meta ending of the show? Were you pleased with what happened? Are you looking forward to a potential season two? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Maybe I'm wrong. Try to prove it. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Share it with others to help the channel grow. Thanks for watching. Bye.